M&M Financial is in focus. Disbursals for the month of August was up more than 17% on a year-on-year -year basis. The total assets have also zoomed 27%. Ramesh Ayer, the Vice Chairman and Managing Director at M&M Financial Services, joins us now. Mr. Ayer, thanks for joining us. You know, in the month of August, the disbursals on a year-on-year -year basis went up 17%, but month-on-month -month it was flat. Just tell us what the trend is looking like over the next couple of months and where do you think you can end the year with as far as disbursal growth is concerned? So the best part of the year is yet to come, right? I mean, the festival seasons are the best part of uh, the market that we work in. And uh, again, historically, we've seen the second half is far, far superior to the first half. So I think the best is yet to come so far as we're concerned in terms of disbursement for future is concerned. Uh, mm -hmm. Year on year, obviously, is very, very good. Uh, for the first time, we are seeing even in the first half, this country. I can't hear you very well. I think there's some issue with your audio. So I'm just going to try and uh, repatch that line. But you're saying the best is yet to come in terms of, you know, dispersal growth. So on the back of this 20, uh, this 17% growth that you've seen in dispersal this time, I'm interested to note, uh, to understand from you what the growth will be for the full year. Uh, so just trying to look at that. Year to date, actually, dispersals are up 23%. I think he's back with us. Mr. Ayer, uh, I couldn't hear that final part. But if, if you're saying that the best is yet to come for the business, what are you looking at by the end of the year? Because year-to-day disbursals are up 23%. You're sitting on a base of around 21,000 crores. Where do you think you can end the year in terms of growth? No, so far as uh, growth rate is concerned, you know, last year's second half was also a good uh, second half. So therefore, the growth rate could probably still be around the same percentages. But I'm seeing in terms of comparison between first half to second half, you'll see second half growth will be much higher than the first half growth. And uh, the festival season, yes, to open up, the monsoon is catching up. So I'm reasonably sure that that will end up positive. Put the two together, I think the rural market will definitely show positive sentiments for the second half growth. All right. Uh, Mr. Ayer, uh, do you want to put a number to it for the year? Uh, <laughs> so if, as I said, the per growth rates would be similar to what we have been seeing. So and if you look at our last year's disbursement and then you apply this growth rate, that's the kind of growth we are talking of. But give us that number. Is it going to be mid teens? Very easily. Or is, is it better than that? I mean, uh, just looking for a range at least. I, I don't want to put a number out there because, okay. uh, you know, at the end of the day, we are enablers to the sales that happens from OEM. The vehicles need to be available. Got it. But reasonably, everything looks positive. Okay. You know, I particularly ask you this because the monsoon has been subpar. Now, that could affect uh, the rural economy on the whole. Are you seeing signs in terms of cash flows getting squeezed out a little bit? Uh, you know, give give us your sense because the monsoons are subpar. That's a given. Uh, your take? No. So if you look at our August collection efficiency was at ninety six percent, and uh, August did have uh, you know lower monsoon, and there was too much of discussion around that. Uh, I repeat myself. I think the sentiments are holding up, and uh, if you look at September, I think many of the markets, whether it's Bihar, UP. Parts of Maharashtra, the monsoon has caught up. So while it may end up a little lower than original expectation, but I think it's sufficient enough to have a good yield and therefore we don't see it as a negative going forward. Okay. Uh, you know, you were talking about how you'll maintain the same kind of growth that you've seen so far, right, in terms of disbursals. But the incremental growth, do you see it coming in from a lot of the new geographies? If yes, which ones? And also the volumes that you're getting in terms of incremental loans. Is it from your newer product offerings, whether it's, uh, you know, SME, the lap, on the digital side as well? And are you seeing an increased share of pre-owned cars? If you can just throw some color on where you're seeing the maximum amount of traction from. So in as far as geography is concerned, I think we are seeing a very uniform behavior across the country. So it's not a... Uh, geography specific approach but we got into the primary segment of the vehicle which is a little high-end segment uh, uh, customers in these markets and we've been gaining some market share there currently about 12 to 13 percent uh, of our book comes from or the disbursement comes from the primary segment and that's mm -hmm. something which is right i think the pre-owned vehicle demand is holding up extremely well in fact uh, the suppliers are constrained even in pre-owned vehicle because Repositions are lower, therefore the supply is not available adequately. Uh, once you see some traction there, I think pre-owned equal will definitely drive growth for us. So far as SME is concerned, it's still about seven percent, five to seven percent of our book. So that's not really a big growth driver in as far as 
disbursements for this year is concerned. But on the vehicle front, Primex segment, pre-owned vehicle, and gaining some market share in our segment that we are in, the three which mm -hmm. adds up to what we are talking about. So this pre-owned vehicle segment, can you tell us, uh, I'm, I'm sure this will also support your yields, right? The pickup that you're seeing in pre-owned vehicles. Uh, so what would this be as a contribution to your overall business? And what would the AUM growth look like over there compared to what you've seen in the past? So I think, uh, you know, if you look at a one year plus kind of a thing, we are talking of 15% plus of the book coming from pre-owned vehicle. And this year, particularly, you will see it go to 10, 12% kind of the book. And definitely they come at a better yield and that improves the overall yields for us. Okay. All right. Mr. Ayer, you know, more in terms of a strategy question from year on, how much of your book is captive finance that's coming in from the group itself? No, so about 45% of our book has always been Mahindra and, product, which is tractors and all of that. And we right, continue and to stay there. What's the strategy? You know, going ahead, do you think that you'll reduce this dependence? Do you expect it to hover around these levels itself? I don't think so. We want to consciously reduce that. We look at the market share that we have for this product. Uh, in as okay. far as the auto products are concerned, we have a market share of anywhere between 30-32%. And for tractor, we have anywhere between 28-30%. I think we're comfortable at that market share. And uh, with the overall volume from all the OEMs remaining what it is, we don't see this composition change substantially. Okay, all right. What about the focus... Uh... And investments in collections, you know, that's the other part of, that the street is looking forward to. Could you tell us the initiatives, the kind of investments you're making out there? So if you look at uh, last about two years, our collection efficiencies have been pretty high. Our gross stage three has substantially come down. And therefore, the net NPS have remained at about mm. two to kind of a number. And that's at the back of excellent uh, uh, cash flows in the market out there. But more importantly, we've also kind of got into different approaches of follow-up in the sense, bucket-wise follow-up, giving a lot of digital capability to customers to be able to repay. Uh, but at the end of the day, the collection is an outcome of a good cash flow on the ground out there. And every activity level we are seeing, whether it's tourism, we see infrastructure, we see the farm cash flow, the people movement, I think all fronts, the cash flow is pretty good. And that's reflected in the collection efficiency as well as in the GS3 and stage 2 reduction. All right. Uh, by the way, I just want to point out that there is a uh, big profiting that uh, you're seeing in the market as well, not just in the mid-cap end of trade when it started, but now that's extended to the frontliners too. I guess it's par for the course because generally, you know, when uh, markets hit these psychological levels, milestones, there is some amount of profiting that you see and there's caution in the system in mid and small caps as well. There is a bit of froth, maybe euphoria if you'd want to call it that. So a little bit of money being taken off the table, but now it's getting steeper. So the Nifty is down almost 80 points. And look at the mid caps, almost a 3% knockdown over there. Uh, Mr. Ayer, just one final question from my end. Uh, you know, your net interest margins in the last quarter had dipped to an eight quarter low. And at that time when we spoke to you, you said that your long term margin guidance stands at seven and a half percent. Are you on track to hold that? Or do you think that there could be some pressure uh, before, you know, the margins recover? So the net interest margins are an outcome of three things, right? One is the borrowing cost still remaining where it is. So no sooner we start seeing the borrowing cost starts to come down, since our lending rates are fixed, you'll start seeing improvement to margin. Two is it's also an outcome of a product mix. As I said, we've increased our product mix when it comes to the prime X, and they come at a little low rate, but they also come at a low cost of operation and low credit cost. Therefore, at the ROA level, we won't see the pressure. And the third is as we start improving our pre-owned vehicle numbers, you'll start seeing improvement. So therefore, on a little one-year kind of a range, if you look at, we are holding on to our net interest margin levels of 7.15, 7.2 kind numbers. Temporarily, you see this dip because of this mix. And as the rate starts to correct, you'll start seeing the benefit. There is a 20 basis point lag that we are yet to pass on to consumers, which we believe that we would do so in the next couple of months. Okay, well, uh, Mr. Ayer, uh, we leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it's always a pleasure having you with us here on CNBC TV 18.